got on the train and it was pretty crowded and I looked around and I'm standing. 90% of the other people standing were females. 70% of those sitting were males, younger males. All of those males sitting were African American males. And I looked around and I thought to myself, if they had known, if they had been taught a little differently, we would not be standing and they would be sitting. They don't have that ingrained in them to look back at the tradition of that and understand where that came from, yeah. to know not to not do that. Those are the same people that then go musically, culturally, into hip hop and say, I don't really care where it started or who came before, I'm focused on me here now. You always gotta remember, the early adapters set those standards that Mecca's yeah. talking about, not the late adapters. And when we talk about who's purchasing hip hop, yes, a white audience is purchasing most of hip hop, but they are not the early adapters. They are the late adapters. Mm -hmm. And the standards has already been set. Yeah. I heard this story from like a DJ. He said before, back in the day in Harlem, in the little music shops, when you would go buy a record, you couldn't just be, oh, I'm a DJ, and they'll sell you the record. They would have 10 under the thing, but you would come and try to buy it, and they wouldn't sell it to you. And now everybody has Serato, everyone can play, everyone can be a yeah. DJ. Same thing with rapping and music it is diluting can i just make a point sorry see what you're saying about late adapters and coming from a uk perspective we're all late adapters in the uk black or white we were late in the sense that when what was going on in the bronx in the mid 70s we caught up on in the early 80s you know as someone who's in their 30s it's still been something that's been there from as long as mm -hmm. i can remember i had a point and it's gone someone else say something because my, my point will come back to, <laughs> I had a back point to the um to the dilution a uh, dissolution, or rather, of hip hop. Not necessarily that it's being diluted, it's growing and it's changing. And we're seeing the byproduct of that growth. And I think that that's something that, with. Also, with I'm sorry, I'm bad at this, I keep interrupting. Do you, do you remember your point now? Yeah. <laughs> no, go ahead. Um, I think also. As hip hop is now undeniably pop culture across the world, I've DJed in, in countries fucking might have never heard of. They grew up on hip hop. Yeah. Anytime something is pop culture, the imagery of the culture, fashion, and and using it as a way to express who you are, comes before the music. For example, in the 90s when I was listening to Nas and Jay and Wu Tang or whatever, it was very specific for us. You had to listen to specific radio shows, and you had to go out there and find the music. So you no, know, I collect sneakers. I dress in a way that would reflect that I'm into hip hop. But all that shit came as an extension of my love for the music. Yeah. And that's the difference between music and culture. It started out as rap and now it's hip hop culture. Culture's now been bastardized as pop culture and it's no longer hip hop culture as far as what the wider audience can see. No, so it's definitely hip hop culture, it's just that's the pop culture. Originally, the culture was centered around the music. Now what you're seeing is the culture is the image and the music is just secondary to the image. That you were saying how like, when you first started listening to hip hop, you had to make an effort to get to it. What you're seeing now in the United States is we're now on the second generation of hip hop where it was readily available. They didn't have to work to get it. It's even without the long run. Then the third. Then the third. Talking about second full generation. Soldier Boy's a businessman with a thriving business. He's the third generation. He's after me. I gotta be second. I'm talking about full generation. I mean, born with hip hop. We're three in. Your father was born with hip hop? Dude, Russell Your father, Sims. how, how, if, if we're talking about 76. Your father was born with hip hop? Russell Simmons was not a full generation of hip hop. Russell Simmons was 20 when he, he got to hip hop. You tell that to him. Okay. No, Russell. <laughs> She gonna tell that to you, son. <laughs> That's fine. Russell would oh, agree. First words of the entire debate. <laughs> let, me you, let me tell you why Russell would disagree. Because if Russell was born into hip hop, then he couldn't take as much credit for helping to create and shape it. It was already there. Who's older, him or her? Her is older by seven years. I still say Russell was, was born in. Her didn't create hip hop at seven. He was nineteen. How old was Russell? Seven years younger. Which is. Oh, I'm not gonna do this with you. Are we finished? He was out. Oh my god! Essentially, if you look at you know the forefathers of the culture, they they created it in their you know teens or early twenties, and therefore with the first generations of it, their kids who are ideally like my age, you know like late twenties, early thirties, are the second generation, and now the younger kids coming through in their early to mid teens that are essentially the third generation. So I would definitely say there's two generations.
Again, going back to I don't appreciate what came before because it's right there in front of me. If you've always had electricity, then you don't really think twice when you go to flip a switch until you know what it's like to live without electricity. Because what's happening is that culture is now influencing other genres of music. Yeah. I run nights at home when I have a, a younger audience that come to a lot of my nights. They're more interested in making sure they've got the latest Jordans, ever the, the latest Supreme gear or whatever. That comes before their love for the music. What is the theme of the night? Hip-hop Right, so if they didn't have some sort of appreciation of hip-hop, they wouldn't be there. But the thing is, they have an appreciation of hip-hop as an image as opposed to music. So, so to be honest, he wouldn't have to play the music for them to still show up wearing the exact same kind of clothes. Show, you showed up and you played nothing but Adele the whole night. Are no, they gonna feel away? They still be rocking those clothes and consider but they, it hip-hop. they gravitate right? to the idea of hip-hop. A lot of the time, people are in the night thinking, oh, I know I'm supposed to be here because I like the idea of hip-hop. And, and these are the big records. To. For any of the audience to come to my night and watch this and think the ships and snips and shit. Nah, it's too home. late now. I'm just, I'm just making an uh, overall nah, kind no of... Nah, no disclaimers, cousin. No disclaimers. It's too late now. <laughs> He done already said that y'all aren't there for the right reasons. I've had people roll up to me and tell me, I made this song, I recorded this whole thing, wrote it, the whole shit, did the beat, five minutes. And then I listened to it. And then they like, what do you think? I'm like, I think you made it in five minutes. It sounds like you made it in five minutes. And you took 20 minutes off of my life to listen to this five minute track. You owe me another 15 minutes. Can I, just really quick, thank you very much to Sam for these Tim Tams all the way from Australia. I thought that was very dope. So we all enjoyed them and they are really delicious and thank you. Normally we just see Niall and Jazz do the interruption thing. This week, that's another reason why he was quiet. He had beef. There's always a Niall replacement and this week it came from the UK. There was no need to fight with Niall for him to argue and debate because he had a competition. That's why he didn't really talk much. That was funny as shit. Um, Jazz never gets cut, cut off, but my man really, you know, he had some great points and he was sticking it to her and, you know, every debate does need that back and forth. Right, so Jazz got cut off by Snips. One of the white loaves didn't pander to Jazz. Big freaking deal. So what? She got cut off. GTFOH. Word up. So what, she got cut off. She'll put her boobs out, interrupt everybody. Her boobs interrupt the room. 